call from the United States of America. Stand by, Americans. Here's Mail Call, one big package of words and music and laughter delivered to you by the stars from whom you want to hear in answer to the request you send to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. And standing at the microphone now to act as your mistress of ceremonies in answer to all your many requests from overseas is one of MGM's brightest young stars, the sensational little actress you enjoyed so much in Two Girls and a Sailor. Here she is, a very cute face with a voice to match, June Allison. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze. Listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees. Send me off forever, but I ask you please. Don't fence me in. Just turn me loose. Let me saddle my old saddle underneath the western sky. On my cayuse, let me wander over yonder till I see the mountains rise. I want to ride to the ridge where the west commences. Gaze at the moon till I lose my senses. Can't look at all and I can't stand fences. Don't fence me in. signature to your mail call letter, and who could fit into a mail call better than a postman, especially if the postman happens to be a great new comedian who plays the part of Jerry Dingle on the Fanny Bryce show, Danny Thomas. And now let's pick up our peripatetic coastman, Jerry Dingle, as he breezily reports for duty to the head coach of Old Sycamore Prep. Jerry, I appreciate your answering my call. I can use you today. Oh, gee, Coach Wingbuck, anything I can do to help out the old team, you know me. Look at my eyes, clear as a bell. Look at my legs, muscles like iron, and look yeah, at my... Whoa, whoa, hold on. It isn't your legs I'm interested in, it's your arm. My arm? You mean you're going to let me carry the ball? Uh, no, Jerry, I want you to carry the pail. <laughs> The pail? Yes, our regular water boy is sick, and I thought you could take his place today. Well, gee, Coach, water boy. I mean, I've asked a lot of my friends to the game. What if they see me? Well, there's plenty of water, Jerry. <laughs> Give him a drink. <laughs> I won't do it, that's all. I won't do it, I tell you, I won't do it. I don't want to be water boy. Stop it, Jerry, you're acting like a baby. You want to carry the water, or don't you? Well, that's the spirit. Two o'clock sharp. Now run along. I got a lot of plays to work out. Big shot coach. Goes to college for four years to learn how to blow a whistle. <laughs> What's so tough about blowing a whistle? Any moron can do it. I've been blowing one for years. <laughs> Big man. 
When he played football for Sycamore, he was the lemon in their T formation. <laughs> he should have been a string changer on a yo-yo team. <laughs> what a show up. I could be a better coach than him any time. Boy, I can just picture myself in the locker room, inspiring the team between heads. What a coach I'd be. Sure, why not? It's a free country. I'm a citizen. I was a coach Dingle. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Dingle doesn't coach football team. He's a second half bucker rupper. That's right. He gives pep talks in locker rooms between halves. Thank you. Oh, hello, Miss Gibney. Any messages? Harvard University called. Sorry, Miss Gibney. Can't make it. How about Princeton? Can't make it. Oh, yes, the Dean of Vassar called. Vassar? <laughs> that I'll make. <laughs> My old alma mater. Your alma mater? Yeah. Vassar's a girls' school. I know. My father sent me there. He wanted me to have all the things mother didn't have. <laughs> oh, Dingle, I need your help. Do you really get results with those pep talks? No, I just look at some of my clients. Notre Dame, Purdue, Ohio State, Michigan. How's Michigan doing? I don't know. They're probably still counting the votes. 